Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our lab session for week 11. This week, I'm covering chapter eight in the textbook, Current Liabilities. What I'm going to do today is two applying Excel exercises. The first exercise will focus on the accounting for notes payable, the issuance of the note, the interest expense on the note, and the payment of interest and the repayment of the note. The second applying Excel exercise, I'm going to be working on a topic within the chapter, or subject in the chapter, probably, known as contingent liabilities. And what I'm going to demonstrate within this lab is how to use Excel to account for in one of the examples of a contingent liability, warranties. So let me begin by focusing on the accounting for a notes payable. You see in cells C4 through C7, data pertaining to the note. The note was issued on July 1st. The principal, the amount of money borrowed, $100,000. The rate, the cost of the borrowing, 6%. The maturity date, the date that the money's borrowed must be repaid, April 1st. So I'm going to begin by focusing on the journal entry to record the issuance of the note. As you can see in the journal entry, the issuance of the note increases an asset called cash and increases a liability called most payable. The dollar amount pertaining to the note issuance is right here in cell C5, the principal of $100,000. So in cell H5, I'm going to type equals, click on C5 to bring in the $100,000. Then in cell I6, I'm going to do the same cell reference, equals. C5. So when a note is issued, cash is debited, notes payable is credited, and the amounts of the debit and credit represent the principal. Now we get into the recording of the interest applicable to the note. Once again, the formula principal times rate, times time comes into play. So I have the cursor in cell I10. I'm going to type the following. Equals dollar sign C dollar sign 5. Asterisk dollar sign C dollar sign 6. Asterisk H10 divided by 12, okay? So in cell I10, you should have the following. Equals dollar sign C, dollar sign five, asterisk, dollar sign Z, dollar sign six, asterisk, H10, backslash 12. What I'm asking Excel to do is to calculate interest based on the formula, principal times rate times time. The principal is the $100,000. The rate is 6%. Time, you see the number of months of interest in year one, six, 12, that's the number of months in a year, 12. So once I click on the check mark, you see the calculation of interest, $3,000. Notice how I use the dollar signs. I want to have absolute cell reference for the principal in cell C5 and the rate in cell C6. The reason I want the absolute cell reference, so I can copy the formula 
in cell I-10 and paste that formula in cell I-11. So I'm in cell I-10. I'm going to click the copy icon. Then I'm going to move the cursor to cell I-11. And I'm going to paste the formula. So you see now that I have calculated the interest associated with the note. Now, keep this in mind. Because of accrual basis accounting, the borrower has incurred an expense during year one. That expense is interest expense. So at the end of year one, an accrued expense adjusting journal entry must be recorded. The accrued expense adjusting journal entry will be a debit to an expense account and a credit to a liability account. Because the accrued expense adjusting journal entry applies to interest, the debit will be the interest expense and the credit will be the interest payable. So in cell H14, I'm gonna type in equals, click on cell I10, and then I'm gonna repeat the process in cell I15, equals I10. What I've done is I've prepared the journal entry to accrue the interest expense for year one. Now we move to April 1st of year two. And April 1st of year two, the third and final transaction associated with this note will be recorded. That is the repayment of the note, which is the amount of money borrowed and the payment of interest. You see in column F, and column G, the journal entry to record the repayment of the loan, which is the note, and the payment of interest. The repayment of what was borrowed is the debit to notes payable. So in cell H18, I'm going to type in an equal sign, and I'm going to click on cell I6 to get the $100,000. Now we get to the interest. You see in cell F19, the debit to interest payable. What is being done in this transaction is to pay the interest that was accrued in year one, okay? So in cell H19, I'm gonna cell reference the interest payable that's in cell I15. Now for year two, there are three months worth of interest, January, February, and March. You see that in row 11. So in cell H20, I'm going to use cell reference to pick up the $1,500 in interest expense that appears in cell I11. So in cell H20, equals I-11. Now I have picked up the following. The repayment of the loan, the debit to notes payable, the, pay, the payment of interest that was incurred during year one, the $3,000 debit to interest payable, and the three months of interest expense incurred in year two, the $1,500. Now, if the year two interest expense was accrued, the debit would not be the interest expense. It would be a debit to interest payable. But because year two's interest was not accrued, the repayment of the loan and the payment of interest must have a debit to interest expense for the year two interest. I'm now gonna move the cursor to cell I-21 and I'm gonna record the credit to cash. 
the credit to cash is going to be the notes payable plus interest. So in cell I-21, I'm going to type in the following. Equals S-U-M for sum. Left parenthesis. I'm going to move the cursor to cell H18. Move down to 19, 20, and close parenthesis, which is right parenthesis. So in cell I-21, you should have the following. Equals sum. Left parenthesis. H18, colon, H20, right parenthesis. I am telling Excel, take the contacts from cell H18 through cell H20 and add them. Once I click the check mark, $104,500. The credit to cash will represent the payment of interest and the repayment of the loan, which is the note payable. So what I've just done in Excel is I've recorded the three main journal entries associated with the notes payable. The issuance of the note, the recognition or accrual of interest, the repayment of monies. And you see the journal entries in items A, C, and D. But what I want you to keep in mind as it relates to the third exam of the semester, the third semester exam, the contents in cells I-10 and I-11, the calculation of the interest expense, the formula, principal, times rate, times time. Keep that formula in mind for the third semester exam. For the final examination, keep in mind the cell references that I used, the sum function, but also the use of the absolute cell reference function or feature, I should say, using dollar signs to facilitate the copying and pasting of formulas. This concludes my work on the first Applying Excel exercise for Chapter 8. I am now going to move to the second Applying Excel exercise. In this exercise, we are going to record a contingent liability. Warranties. We're going to focus on the data in columns B and C. You see in cell C4, 25,000 units sold. The management of this company that sells these units thinks that 4% of these units will come back for some type of service. Think about when you have trouble with your car, you bring it in. It could be for brakes, could be for battery. You bring your car in as long as those parts are under warranty, you don't have to pay for the service. That's what's going on here with this company. The management of this company is estimating that a percentage of what it sells measured in units will come back for further service. Management thinks that to repair one unit under warranty, it will cost the company $100. And the number of units that have been fixed in the current year, none. In other words, none of the units have come back to be serviced under the warranty. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cursor to cell G5. I'm going to calculate the estimate of the number of units that management thinks will come back to be serviced under the warranty. This is going to be a formula. 
Because it's going to be a formula in cell G5, I will begin with the equal sign. To calculate the estimated number of units, I'm going to click on cell C4, then asterisk, then click on cell C5. So in cell G5, you should have equals C4, asterisk, C5. We're going to take the 25,000 units sold, multiply that by 4%. Click the check mark, you see 1,000. That means, based on the number of units sold and the estimate of 4%, this company's management thinks that 1,000 units will come back to be serviced under the warranty. The next step in the process is to estimate the warranty cost. I'm going to move the cursor to cell G8. To calculate the estimated future warranty cost, I'm going to use a formula. Therefore, in cell G8, I must begin with an equal sign. I'm going to click on cell G5, then type in an asterisk, and click on cell G6, okay? So in cell G8, you should have equals G5 asterisk G6. I am telling Excel, take the 1,000 units in cell G5 and multiply them by the estimated warranty cost per unit of $100, that's the cell G6. I click the check mark. Based on the data presented in this exercise and the estimates that management is placing, this company thinks that it is going to cost $100,000 to service products that were sold that will come back because of the warranty or more specific for a variety of reasons related to the maintenance of the product. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the cursor to cell K12. I am going to calculate the credit to the warranty liability. Now, in part C of this exercise, I am going to record a contingent liability. The contingent liability is going to be the effort that this company is going to make to service products that are under a warranty. This year-end adjusting entry under item C is an accrued expense adjusting entry. I'm going to debit an expense account and credit a liability account. Because the adjusting entry applies to a warranty, the debit will be to warranty expense and the credit will be to warranty liability. So in cell K12, I'm going to type the following. Equals. G8 minus, asterisk, parenthesis, 1 minus G7, right parenthesis. So in cell K12, you should have the following. Equals G8 asterisk. Left parenthesis, 1 minus G7, right parenthesis. I am telling Excel, take the $100,000 that's in cell G8 
and multiply that by the difference between the number one, which represents 100%, and the portion of units fixed in the current year. The 0% you, sell, you see in cell C7. So when I click the asterisk, we have the warranty liability of $100,000. What this means is the following. Based on the data appearing in cells C4 through C7, this company has an obligation to provide services for products that it sold under a warranty, a guarantee that the product, should something go wrong, will be fixed or repaired free to the customer. So I'm going to just move the cursor to cell J11, and I'm going to do a cell reference equals K12. So our journal entry is a debit to warranty expense and a credit to warranty liability for $100,000. Now you see in part D of this exercise, an alternative. The alternative I'm gonna record in cell K16. How I'm gonna record the credit to warranty liability under the alternative is on based on the following. In cell K16, I'm gonna do the following. Equals G6 asterisk, left parenthesis, one minus C14, right parenthesis. So in cell K16, you should have the following. Equals G8, Asterisk, left parenthesis, one minus C14, right parenthesis. Now, once again, I'm taking the $100,000 that was estimated for the warranty cost. But notice what I've done within this formula. In the alternative, you see in cell C14, 25%. That represents a percentage or will tie into the number of units that were actually returned for service. So when we factor the one minus C14, 100% minus 25%, that means 75% of the units expected to be returned have not been returned. That means the company has an obligation. That obligation is not $100,000, it's $75,000. What the $75,000 represents is an estimate on the amount of money, an obligation, that a company has to service products that were sold under a warranty. Now, the reason that the 75% is lower than the 100,000 that you see here is right here. In cell C14, 25% of the products sold came back for service, whereas in cell C7, none of the units sold came back for service. So in cell J15, to complete the journal entry, I'm just gonna do cell reference, equals K16. Now for the purpose of the third semester exam, this particular exercise is gonna be a very broad feature of contingent liability. What is going on here is a company is recording a liability today for something that may happen tomorrow. 
the company is recording a liability today for something that may happen tomorrow. The liability today is the warranty liability, an obligation to provide services for products coming back for repairs. What may happen tomorrow is people actually bringing back the products to be serviced. Management does not know for certain the number of units that are going to come back, but thinks some of them are going to come back. That is the concept of a contingent liability. Management has a feeling, an instinct, that something is going to happen in the future, but is not exactly sure how much of it. Because it thinks today that something may happen in the future, that requires the recognition of a liability, a contingent liability. That will be a question appearing in the third semester exam. Basically, to, un to know the definition of a contingent liability. Now, for the final examination, you see again, I'm using cell references for formulas. So that is going to be the main feature from this exercise, to recognize once again the importance of cell references when calculating amounts based on formulas that you're typing in Excel. So folks, this concludes my lab for week 11, which is covering chapter eight, current liabilities. Thank you.